Hello my friend today we are going on and I want today to discuss about atomic spectrum so spectrum is the arrangement of characteristic frequencies of electromagnetic radiation absorbed or emitted by an atom so based on this definition spectrum can be radiations absorbed by an atom or radiations emitted by an atom so arrangement of the frequencies of the electromagnetic radiations absorbed or emitted by an atom or in other words spectra is the arrangement of radiation in order for increasing frequency or decreasing wavelength so these radiations they may be absorbed by an atom or emitted now when we are going on, on the types of spectrum if an atom is emitting radiation from it we call it as emission spectrum and if an atom is absorbing radiation into it we call it as absorption spectrum now these two types of spectrum means emission spectrum and absorption spectrum they are divided furthermore into three categories which are line spectrum band spectrum and continuous spectrum Emission spectrum, by definition, is the arrangement of electromagnetic radiation emitted by an atom due to an atom's electron transition from high energy level to a lower energy level. As we discussed in the previous lecture, that electron transition from high energy level to lower energy level lead to the emission of energy it absorbed when it was excited. So the light or the energy which is emitted can arrange itself into different wavelengths or into different frequencies and that when we view it we call it as the emission spectrum on the other hand absorption spectrum is the arrangement of frequency of electromagnetic radiation absorbed by an atom absorption spectrum does not contain all radiation of all wavelengths so absorption spectrum just contain few wavelengths as compared to emission spectrum so in appearance emission spectrum appear as a black then it has lines of different color while the absorption spectrum appears white while it has dark lines within it so that is the major difference between absorption and emission spectrum now line spectrum these all of these two categories they are divided into they are divided further more into three categories line spectrum band spectrum and continuous spectrum now line spectrum line spectrum is the emission spectrum which only certain frequency with only certain frequency it is produced by excited electron and the ions as they fall back to a lower energy level so in line spectrum the spectrum forms distinct lines there are distinct lines in the spectrum while in band spectrum lines they are arranged in groups closer in one side and far apart in another side so band spectrum is the one which consists of well defined group of lines group of lines that's why they are called band spectrum the lines in each band are closer to one side than other here they they doesn't they doesn't illustrate but in reality they could not require to appear like this so band spectrum lines should be closer on one side and far apart on the other side as you can see in most of the books they have explained this so band spectrum consists of well defined band of lines group of lines where the continuous spectrum continuous spectrum the emission spectrum with all the wavelength or frequency of visible light so continuous spectrum have all the wavelength remember in line spectrum we have distinct line means it have few frequencies in the band spectrum we have group of lines in the continuous spectrum this is the spectrum with all wavelengths of frequency of visible light now let's go on to hydrogen spectrum hydrogen spectrum is the line spectrum 
That's the first thing you must know. Hydrogen spectrum is the line spectrum. So, hydrogen spectrum, by definition, is the series of radiation which are formed when hydrogen atom is excited by heating. Spectros spectroscopic analysis technique analyzes that hydrogen spectrum has three regions which are named on honor of their discovery, such that Lyman series, Bama series, and the Pastian series. So, it's not true that hydrogen spectrum have only three regions. It have more than this. But here, they have analyzed these three regions. Now, you must know this in a hydrogen spectrum because sometimes they ask you to define what is a Lyman series, Bama series, or Pastian series. And sometimes, if not to define, they may ask you any question about hydrogen spectrum and ask you about this. So, because I want to make my students competent, I produce another video about hydrogen spectrum using other notes or another book so as to make you more competent. But what thing you have to know here, hydrogen spectrum, hydrogen atom has one electron. So when it is given energy, that one electron can be excited to a certain energy level. When it is coming back to its ground state, which is N1, which is N1, the electron can emit energy. So that energy which is emitted appears spectrum, appears a line spectrum. Now, Lyman series is the section of hydrogen spectrum whose radiation results from electron transition from high energy level to energy level one or to the first energy level. So in Lyman series, as you can see in the diagram here, we have any one below here, we have N2, N3, N4, N5, and N6. So in Lyman series, these are ultraviolet. They must fall, electron must fall from any of the high energy level to the first energy level. This is Lyman series. Then in Bama, Bama, electron must fall from high energy level to the second energy level. The section of hydrogen spectrum whose radiation results from electron transition from higher energy level to energy level N2. Now these are Bama series. Bama series is the only visible series or is the only visible part of hydrogen spectrum. So if they ask you the visible part of hydrogen spectrum is Bama series, only Bama series. We don't have any part of hydrogen spectrum which is visible rather than Bama series. So here they appear in different color because of different wavelengths. Lyman is ultraviolet and the Pastian is the infrared. Other series, they are either, other series, they are infrared. But Bama is the only visible part of hydrogen spectrum, or the only part of hydrogen spectrum which can be seen by naked eyes. Now, Pastian series is the section of hydrogen spectrum whose radiations result from electron transition from high energy level to energy level N3. So hydrogen spectrum is represented as horizontal lines like this. Here there are many, many, many things to understand. Many. As you can see from from N1 to N2, here there is a grid space between N1 and N2. Between N2 and N3, the space is somewhat decreased. And if 3 and then 4, these lines, spaces, as you are going, the lines, they become close and close. So, the, the cause of the line to become close and closer is what will cause the line to converge. And where the lines will converge is what you call is convergent limit. Electron excited from any one line to more than that limit will be out of the electrostatic attraction by the nucleus and that electron and that atom will be said to be ionized. So the arrangement of color in a visible region are shown in this row here. So these are the, they are the arrangement of color in a visible region. Means these are the arrangement of color in Ibama series. In Ibama series. 
Now, the relationship between wavelength and the energy level. The equation which shows the relationship between wavelength and the energy level is given below. So the equation is like this. This is called the, is called the Rayburg equation. But it is the equation which we are normally using in the calculations of wavelength and energy level in the hydrogen spectrum. Different things can be done here in this equation. You can calculate frequency, you can calculate velocity, and things like that. Many, many maneuvers and manipulations can be done from this equation. So I beg you to follow up in the another video which I produce about demonstrating the use of this equation in calculations. So this this lambda means wavelength and one is the original energy of an atom and two the level of an electron in excited state. Remember, any one here is the lower energy level. Despite an electron is being excited or it falls from high energy level. So for example, when an electron comes from energy level energy level four to energy level two, any one will be equal to 2 because 2 is nearer the nucleus compared to 4 and 2 will be equal to 4. Don't assume that any one is the original position of an electron because if you assume that any one is the original position of an electron you can take here any one is equal to 4 which is not correct. The value of any one must be smaller than n2. So in short any one is the energy level which is closer to the nucleus and to the energy level of an electron in excited state in excited state so in two must be a bigger number than in one rh is like by constant and its value is like that one while that one is wave number so different maneuvers can be done from the equation to calculate frequency wave number and things like that here there are some worked example. Uh, for example, you are given speed of light and release by constant. Then you are told, calculate the frequency of third line in a visible region of hydrogen spectrum. Now, according to this question, we are going back to the hydrogen spectrum. Third line of visible series. According to this question, calculate the frequency of third line in a visible region of hydrogen spectrum. Remember I told you that the only visible region of hydrogen spectrum is Bauma series. So now the first line is the electron falling from N3 to N2. The second line is the electron falling from N4 to N2. The third line is the electron falling from N4 to N2. I hope everybody remembers what I've done here. I'm repeating. The third line is the electron falling from N2 to N2, from N3 to N2. The second line, electron falling from N4 to N2, and the third line from N5 to N2. Now, according to how I told you that N1 must be a smaller value, so N1 here is 2, and N2 is 5. We are counting from the line which is shorter, and then we are going. So the first line here is from N3 to N2. Don't count here. the first line is from N6 to we are the series of counting. We are starting here, the shorter line. So that's how we can know the values of N2 and N1. And here in your calculation, you can include the diagram which can draw that hydrogen spectrum and show the lines which could illustrate to your teacher that N1 is equal to 2 and N2 is equal to 5. Now, having already known N1 is equal to 2 and N2 is equal to 5, you just compute your values in the raised by the equation and then you get your answers of frequency. Um, and the example here, given part of a hydrogen spectrum, can be represented by the equation that one. What do the symbol lambda, RH, and N2 represent? Lambda is the wavelength of a hydrogen spectrum. RH is the constant, where N2 represents 
the energy level of excited electron in a hydrogen spectrum. What is the unit of lambda? That one and that one. As you know, the unit of lambda is per meter. The unit of Lisbon constant is it is seen here. It is per meter. It is per meter also. And the unity of any any the energy level, so it does not have unity. Calculate the wavelengths of the first line in a Bama series of hydrogen spectrum. Now, as you know, Bama series is the electron coming from high energy level to N2. And here, the first line of Bama series is from N3 to N2. I hope I, I have explained this in the first question, and you all know this. So, I hope you have a good understanding about this if you are told the first line may be in Bama series, in Lehman series, or in Fashion series. For example, if you are told the first line in Lehman series means is from N2 to N1. First line in Fashion series from N4 to N3, and etc. etc. So here, here in example series, dissolved here, as you can see, N1 is equal to and N2 is equal to 3. They have just substituted here and they get the value for wavelength, then the value for frequency. Another example here, example 3, calculate the wavelengths of a line in a Bama city that is associated with energy transition. Energy 2 is equal to that one and energy 4 is equal to that one. So here, there are two energies, energy 2 and energy 4. Remember, the energy of an electron the energy of an electron decreases it is as it is moving away from the nucleus. What I mean is that the ionization energy of an electron. Electron in the fourth shell maybe has the smaller attraction to the nucleus as compared to the electron in the second shell. That is because the attraction between the nucleus and the electron is the electrostatic attraction but remember in the Coulomb law, in the Coulomb law, that if you want to get force, force will be equal to constant, then Q1, Q2 divided by R square. Remember, R square here is the distance separating the two charges. Now, having already memorized you the Coulomb law of electric current in physics, or if you don't know it, what out? But what I want to explain here is that force is inversely proportional to the square of radius or the square of the distance separating the two things which are attracting together in electrostatic force. So if force is inversely proportional to the square of distance separating two objects being attracted together by electrostatic force, means that if the objects they are too far the force will decrease. So here, labeled E2, negative 5.44 times 10 power negative, that is more attraction as compared to negative 1.36. So it's not easier to understand me if you have not done the, the current system or the electrostatic in physics. But if you do physics, it is easier to understand. If you don't do physics, if you are studying CBG, if you are studying things like that, what out? But here, one thing you have to understand, E2 is closer to the nucleus than E4. So now, as you have already known about the energy, we are going back into the what we call the Planck's equation. If you remember, in the Planck's equation, energy was equal to Planck's constant then frequency. Now here you are calculating change in energy. Change in energy. And change in energy here change in energy it was equal to E4 minus E2 because E4 is the energy of an electron at energy level 4 and E2 is the energy of an electron at energy level 4 at energy level of 2. But here, I think this feature done a mistake because this value of E4 was a negative value. 
was a negative 1.36 minus negative. So this value of y could become positive, but this could be negative as it was. So that's all. Question number four. The electron, the energy of an electron in a hydrogen atom, when it is ground state, will be given by the equation. Energy one is equal to that one. Joule, the energy of the same electron if occupies a high energy level, and two, energy two is equal to that one. Data given. Now they want you to calculate the energy of an electron as if there is no question here. But I don't know, they want you to calculate energy. Okay, they want uh, they want you to calculate energy. And the question is short like that. If there is any problem, you can consult me. But I will just upload an independent video explaining about these questions. As you can see here, uh, they have given you wavelength of 50. First member in Bama series and region spectrum with that one. Calculate the wavelength of the second member of Lyman series. This question, be careful now. This question is very tough. It's very tough. You are given wavelength of first member in Bama series. One thing you should do here is to calculate Lazybug constant. In a question like this, we don't use the Lazybug constant we know normally. So you are calculating it from your wavelength. Now you're using this equation, and as you have already known, the first member of Bama series means is from N3 to N2. You are calculating the value of wavelength. Then after calculating the value of wavelength, you are you are calculating the value of laser by constant. After calculating the value of laser by constant, now you are going on to calculate the value of wavelength using the value of laser by constant. And as you know about Lyman series, the second member of Lyman series means is from N3 to N1, as it is demonstrated here, and then you finish. So all of these calculations, I will demonstrate them in the calculation videos. But also, you can calculate about the energy of an electron in its shell. Electron in its shell. And it is represented as energy of an electron is equal to negative negative thirteen point six e divided by n square. Now e is the electronic charge, which is one point six times ten power negative nineteen coulomb, and n is the energy level of an electron. So. Here there are weekly examples and I think for this topic it's over. We can calculate these questions next time. And as you see there is a concept of ionization energy, ionization energy, concept of ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron completely from its atom. Ionization energy can be obtained from the Planck's equation. Now, from the Planck's equation, which is energy is equal to HF, we have derived this to that equation, to that equation, which is energy is equal to negative, negative 13.6 electronic charge divided by N square. Now, in the ionization energy, N is infinity. N which is shell is infinity. But as you can see here, ionization energy can be calculated as Avogadro's number, then Planck's constant frequency. So, for example, here calculate the amount of heat energy required to remove an electron from N5 to infinity. So, the energy needed to take an electron from N5 to infinity is equal to the energy difference between the two energy levels. So two energy levels means the first energy level is N5, but the second energy level is infinity. 
And if we put infinity here in this equation, which is negative 13 times electronic charge, then divided by infinity, you will get an infinite answer. So simply, you can't get that. About Bohr atomic theory, we already discussed this, but we are just memorizing them. And here, the electron revolve along with the nucleus in particular pass called orbit. Then each orbit have different amount of energy, hence they are called energy level. When an electron jump from one energy level to another, it emit or observe energy. Angular momentum of an electron is quantized. So if it is quantized, it means it have a certain fixed value. Here we are calculating m v r is equal to h divided by two pi. So this is the equation you must know it. M is the mass of an electron, v is the velocity, that is the linear velocity, and r is the radius. So that is not circular velocity, it is the linear velocity. Discussing some of the success of Bohr atomic theory, he may need to explain the Lenzberg equation. He may need to calculate the radius of hydrogen. He explained the hydrogen spectrum. Determination of energy of an electron when it is in a stationary state. So these are success and the weakness they are here. Weakness or drawbacks if I to explain spectrum of multi electronic atom, if to explain splitting of spectral line when subject to magnetic electric field. He was challenged by Heisenberg that is impossible to determine both velocity and the position of moving electron at the same time. We shall see it later. Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Then he failed to explain quantization energy. He failed to explain shape of a molecule, that is shape of orbit. He failed to explain relative brightness of spectral lines, that is why some of the spectral lines they are bright and some of them they are not bright as others they appear. So for today, let's end here. Next video, I'll be discussing about the atomic number, including notation, and all about the mass spectrometer, and all the calculations, principle of working, and all of these questions they are asked directly. Thank you everybody. I am continuing to invite you in my telegram group. Remember, I am just using my time doing these videos. Sometimes people can think maybe as if I am paid. Or, but sometimes you should know that I am doing this in my own risk. That is, I am losing my time to help the students. However, Maybe not all of the things will be perfect is how you want, but most of the things you can learn them free as much as, as if you could go to tuition and you assess notes free on Telegram. So, welcome anybody, and there on Telegram you can assess me more simply other than YouTube. I will put a link in the description and I beg you to just continue following my videos so you can get more and more.